Hello, my name is Akutsuko, and welcome back to Berg Chan's Memento. So, I was like looking through a couple things on the internet for some <laughs> thumbnails, and I may have seen one or two images that I shouldn't have seen for this game. So hopefully it did not ruin anything for me, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm insanely excited to, like, actually be getting into, into this game. Morning comes all too swiftly for the, I need to take one of these out again. Shuki's alarm goes off at 7am and Shuki considers it's a miracle that he doesn't sleep through it. After turning off the alarm, he yawns and pulls himself out of bed. He stubs his toe on the nightstand and, oh, that sucks, and curses as he makes his way to the bathroom. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna be a bad day. Shuki bays quickly, being particularly careful to wash all night loud. <laughs> all of last night off. Specifically, Ryu's gaudy cologne. Ah, he's your boyfriend, I mean, you could have told him something. Seriously. Who is he trying to impress with that 100 yen crap? Okay, yes, this is definitely Japan then. I have concluded what I had thought in previous episode. After his bath is done and his uniform is put on, Shuki begins the painstaking process of drying and styling his long hair. Mere minutes into this process, there is the sound of someone jiggling the doorknob and trying to enter. Oh, learn to knock. When the door fails to open, the person on either side follows up with the loud, irritated sounding knocks course. I'm guessing I know who this is. Yep. Are you still in there? Come on, I have to get ready for school too, remember? It's your fault for not waking up earlier, not mine. Oh, You're such a priss. You're just doing your hair anyway, right? Just let me get in so I can brush my teeth at least. If I have to wait until you're done, I'll be late. Shuki clicks his tongue in annoyance. It'll be super cramped if I let Masani in here. The guy has no concept of personal space. Still, he doesn't want to hear any angry, angry rant from his brother this early in the morning, so he opens the door. Masaharu shuffles into the bathroom and roughly shoves Shuki over to free- Dude, I let you in out of the kindness of my heart and you're gonna push me all around places? You're a dick. Wow, talk about ungrateful. Pay no attention to Shuki's obvious annoyance. Masaharu pulls out a razor out of the drawer and ch Dude, you have no hair on your face! Shuki tries his hardest not to laugh, but the temptation to tease is just too much to resist. <laughs> what are you even doing with that razor? Exfoliating? Can you even exfoliate with a frickin' razor? What does that even mean? Not like you're growing a beard anytime soon. Shut up. Anyway, I don't even know what ex exfoliation even is. Wow. Weren't you the one that was supposed to be, like, studying or something like that? I mean, you clearly took up the reins for doing school well in this family. Where is your vocab? Well, that would explain all the acne. Masaharu drops the razor and leans closer to the mirror in a panic. What? Where? Not telling. <laughs> I bet there isn't even any. You're just trying to mess with me, you ass. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Why do you even care? Got a hot date or something? What's it to you? Nothing, I just thought it was weird for you to care about what your face looks like. You make it sound like I'm a total slob or something. You mean you're not? That's news to me. Aw, oh, sibling rivalry. Shuki finishes drying and brushing his hair as he makes jabs at Masaharu. Now for straightening. I wish my natural hair wasn't so damn wavy. Maybe I should get a straight perm one of these days, but that might totally burn my hair. I mean, you could just cut it. I mean, I get that you like the long hair and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. I don't have a problem with it at all. I'm just saying. It, it, you, you could cut it. Some minutes later, Shuki's hair is straight and, in his opinion, flawless. He looks everything... It does not take a minute to straighten all that hair. I have straightened hair before. It is. It, it takes way longer to straighten that length of hair. He looks everything over, painstakingly examining his reflection in the mirror. Look great, as usual. Yeah. That hairdo would definitely take way longer than a couple minutes. There's no freaking way. Alright, I'm out. Sorry, I don't mean to go off into a tangent about freaking hair care. Have fun shaving your non-existent facial hair, Masani. He used to dodge a soap bar. Aw, don't break the soap. What am I going to use when I shower later? Shuki goes to check on Natsume. Joke's on him, I use that on my butt. 
But even before he reaches the doorway, he argued, One time as a birthday present, Shuki and Mazar are both chipped in to get Natsume an alarm clock that increased in volume the more time passed. I mean, that's on pretty much every smartphone now, is it not? I mean, that's what my smartphone is, because I have a terrible time waking up too. Back then, they thought themselves pretty clever for thinking this up. Clock worked for a grand total of two days before Natsume's ears got used to ignoring the sound. Now, despite the fact that the alarm's volume is approaching the threshold for pain, Natsume blissfully and obviously or obliviously sleeps on. Wow, 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 me and speaking today. Typical, so it's business as usual, I guess. Well, actually, it's, it's, I mean, me and speaking just don't get along most of the time, so I don't know what I'm talking about today. Today is just like every other day. Masaharu finishes getting ready before long and starts Operation Wake Up Not Today by getting a bag of ice from the freezer. Oh no! Shuki, the aspiring sadist of the family, goes for the. Oh, dude, do not put that in places where it should not be. After the ice is unceremoniously shoved down Natsume's pants and the powder stuffed in. <gasps> dude, that would hurt so bad. Natsume finally wakes up simultaneously, shivering and sneezing. He races off to the bathroom. Oh, you guys are jerks. Make sure he doesn't fall asleep in the bath again. No way, I did it yesterday. It's your turn. It worked! Oh my god! <laughs> I can't believe that worked. Actually, I haven't done it since last week. Sucker. Well, whatever. At about 7.45 a.m., their morning routine is nearly complete. Natsume, now mostly awake and dressed for school, cooks them breakfast and pulls out bentos made for lunch the night before. While the food is mostly cooked and prepared during the evening, Natsume puts the finishing touches on the bentos in the morning. Each bento is specially cooked. Masaru's food is more protein, which is good for athletes. Whereas Shuki's bento consists of very light yet high calorie foods that can be eaten quickly. Is it because he's small? He looks small. He looks like a small dude. The two of them neither know nor pay much attention to what Natsume eats, though it seems he cooks for himself as well. I mean, obviously, what else would he be doing? After breakfast, Masaharu and Shuki say goodbye to their parents, while Natsume watches an exchange from- Why? As usual, no words are exchanged between Natsume and his parents. Oh, cause he- his school thingy. The three brothers then head into the school just in time. Nice. Shuki shoves his things into his locker, changes his shoes, and then starts to dash off to class, hoping he doesn't get caught by. Oh no! I knew this. I knew this confrontation was coming. I knew it was gonna be a thing. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go like really, really bad in just a couple seconds here. Damn, I was too slow. Yeah, you're way too slow. Oh, Ryu, what's with that look? Don't oh Ryu me. How could you just leave me there last night? I ended up getting charged a fee for staying there past- Dude, you're the one who didn't pay for it in the first place and didn't freaking wake up. That sucks, but I had a curfew. I had to get home. You couldn't have woken me up first? Dude, I tried. I tried. You didn't- Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. So you just left? You're really not sensitive person at all, are you? Like, I've never heard that before. You're the one who went out with me, even though you already knew I was like this. Look, I'm sorry, okay? It couldn't be helped. It's your fault for not going to the all-night option in the first place. Reserving a room all night's expensive. And what does that have to do with anything anyway? If you'd reserved a new room for all night, we wouldn't have had to leave, and I wouldn't have had to wake you up, obviously. I thought you said you had a curfew. Oh, I do, but I usually ignore it. Then why did you have to get home in such a hurry that you just ran off without waking me up first? Dude, I tried to wake you. Do you not understand the T I I don't know how to spell. The T R I. The T. Do you not understand the T-R-Y in try? I don't think you're getting this right now. Since last night, no, since way before that, I've known that this is as far as we could go. He's not the one for me. He can't accept me for who I really am. Our fight last night just proved it. There are perhaps a hundred nice ways to break up with someone. Shuki's not one to be nice. Not usually. His eyes flick down to Ryo's crotch and then his lips cr Oh no, dude. Dude, don't. Please don't go there. Seriously. Well, you didn't. Oh. Oh my god, dude. You. Reached massive level of dick right there. Oh. Were you incensed by this affront to his manhood? Lunges at Shuki, ramming him into the lockers behind him. 
Classmates passing by stop to snigger at the scene but do nothing to help. Uh, don't get into these freaking stupid name calling th Really? Last I checked, you're a fag too. Oh, he's older than him. Or did you forget about what we were doing last night? Ryu laughs bitterly. It's the sound of someone who knows he's going to come out ahead. I dated women before you. If anyone asks, I'm saying you forced me. How does this little freaking thing force you into something? That I don't get. Oh, dude. As if I never had to deal with rumors before. Oh, dude, come on now. No matter what talks around Shuki, he's never had trouble finding someone who's interested in him. Some people just like the thrill of a forbidden relationship. In fact, that's just how he and Ryu got together in the first place. Forced you, huh? Well, I guess that's the only way you'd have ever gotten laid. You should be thanking me. Oh, dude. Shuki hears a sharp cracking sound before registering that he's been punched in the jaw. The pain being the last part that he feels. The echo of his skull slamming into the lockers reverberates through the emptying hallways. Little white dots fill his vision, bringing him just short of a concussion. How does he know that, though? Damn, that'll probably leave a bruise. Still, Shuki is used to this. Life as a school's infamous serial dater is just as many downs as ups. You satisfied now? I mean, I don't see a reason why I would talk to you again when you clearly just frickin' beat the crap out of me. But, yeah, sure, I'll abide by your request. No problem. Maybe I'm preaching to the choir here, but if you keep going on like this, you'll end up dead in a ditch one of these days. Better than having to sleep with you again. Ryu raises his hand again, and despite his bravado, Shuki can't help but flinch. To Shuki's surprise, something like pain flickers across Ryu's face. For a moment, Shuki wonders if he's gone too far with his provocations. After some ten seconds, Ryu just shuffles off angrily, kicking a few lockers in his wake. Shuki watches his now ex-boyfriend's back until Ryu is completely out of sight. Goodbye, Ryu. Sometimes I wonder if you actually do this on purpose because you enjoy being punished or something. Real funny, Chi-Chan. Chiaki Sarada. A senior has been Natsume's best friend since childhood. Over the years, he's gotten to know the rest of the Amamiya family pretty well, too. I'm just trying to be honest. What's the point of dragging things out? Honest or just cruel? Yeah, definitely cruel, dude. You are insanely cruel for bringing up what you brought up. I mean, even if he was small, you don't just say that to somebody. Even if you were dating him as well. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. He didn't do anything wrong to you. Well, if you're okay with being punched in the face on a weekly basis, then I guess that's fine or whatever. I mean, how many times can you get punched in the face before you, like, start getting permanently disfigured like that? Spare me. The Shuki doesn't exactly advertise it. His bisexuality is pretty well known among the student body. Oh, he's bisexual. Okay, okay, okay. So, apparently, he's not as feministic as I thought he was. I don't know if that's really a word. Masahiro is still somewhat weirded out by him, and Natsume and Chiaki have long learned to accept Shuki for who he is. Good thing, too, is he has no intention of changing his ways. I mean, yeah, he just has that personality. Fine, fine, just don't get in too much trouble. It would be pretty crazy for me to wake up one day and find out you've been knifed by a jilted love, A jilted lover? Now, totally surprising, but still crazy, so take it easy. <laughs> My love knife. I mean, it seems pretty melodramatic to me. That whole locker scene thing just a second ago seemed like it had a lot of melodramatics kind of inserted in there. You kind of pushed it over the edge a little bit, dude. It looks to me like you're in this kind of situation pretty often. Please, that guy who just walked off is the only person I've dated for ages. I mean, you... It really depends on whether you count dating as a one-night stand or not, because I'm guessing you've had plenty of those. Not to be cruel or anything. Besides, it's not like anyone expects me to be their soulmate in high school. Who the hell would knife me for breaking up with them? You never know, there's some crazy freaking people out there, dude. As a warning bell chimes, Shiaki just laughs and heads to class, poking Shuki in the shoulder. Shuki's sure he hears Shiaki whisper brat under his breath, but his childhood friend has gone too fast for him to complain. <laughs> Guess I gotta be Guess I better go before I'm late. The rest of the school day passes in a totally uninteresting fashion. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've had plenty of freaking interesting events happen for you today. I don't think you would be able to survive if you had any more. I don't know why Masani worried so much about the exams. They weren't that bad. Probably won't make A's, but B's are good enough for me. 
It's a passing grade, at least. After getting his things in order, Shuki notices that neither Natsume nor Masaharu at the front of the school where they usually get their home to get ready. To home together. Bleh. Wonder what's up? Neither of them respond when Shuki texts him on his cell phone. You do have a cell phone then, so this isn't like too far in the past then, right? Typical, I'd better go find them if I want to get home anytime soon. Masani's in 2C, I think. Shuki makes his way up the stairs to the second year's floor. A lot of students have dispersed, but Masaharu and a handful of others stayed behind to discuss the exam. He spots Nasaharu Masaharu in the corner of the room talking to another boy he recognizes as Yukunari Hosaka. I don't know how you make exams look so, how taking exams look so effortless. Effortless, hardly. I didn't study that much, so I'm pretty worried. Shuki vaguely remembers Yukinari coming to their house to work on a project with Masaharu once, but he's never actually talked to Yukinari before. He's got some funky hair, dude. Masaharu leaves his head on his desk and lets out a muffled groan. Even though you say that, you'll end up getting a higher score than me anyway, right? Yukinari laughs slightly. Come on, you don't have to turn everything into a competition, Mr. Basketball Star. Masaharu only sighs in response, he looks exhausted. Aw, oh, dude. Yukinari glances away from Masaharu for a moment and catches Shuki's eye, smiles knowingly and nudges Masaharu's shoulder. Look, your brother's here, shouldn't you go? When Masaharu looks up and sees Shuki, he sighs again, only more dramatic. No more dramatics for today, sir, please, I've had enough of them. Yeah, I'm not exactly thrilled to see that mug of yours either, Masanin, hurry up. Alright, I'll see you later, Hosokawa. You can already announce goodbye before he starts getting his own stuff together. Now we gotta go find Natsume. Dunno, he wasn't at the entrance. His classroom's further than yours, so I thought I'd get you first. What the hell took you so long? We just had our first exam of the week, Shuki. I was discussing it with some of my classmates, comparing answers. You know? Actual school stuff? Like, that'll do you any good. The tests have already been turned in, right? Yeah, but... A slacker like you wouldn't understand. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Yep, past it. He's even got headphones on. Who carries head? I mean, I used to carry headphones around with me in school too, so really can't say too much about that. How long has he been asleep? I don't know. Not too long, I think. He finally finished his test, but the teacher had to pry it out from under him. So even he takes his finals seriously, but like. Pretty sure he was going to be held back a year for real this time if he didn't do well. Exactly, exams are like super important. They count for a lot of your grade. He studied for him. I'd say no wonder why he's so sleepy, but really has nothing to do with it. He's always sleepy. Yeah, so far as I know. Not too many grades were amazing up until his second year of middle school, and he did so well in his entrance exams that he was accepted in Nemesei, a top ranked school in Nagasaki, easily despite his abysmal third year grades. Everyone had high hopes for him. It was like it was a horrible shock to the faculty when their star student turned out to be the worst slacker they'd ever admitted. After a whole year of watching Natsume fail tests and exams, as well as not turning in a single assignment unrelated to Japanese literature, the administrators made a special exception. Who makes an exception like that? Usually schools would just be like, nope, you're out of here. I mean, I guess that would be pretty harmful to them, too. As long as Natsume passed his exams, they would advance. That's, that's harmful to him, though, is it? He's never going to get into university with crappy grades, but at least he'll graduate. Yeah, there's that, I guess. Anyway, I have to go and cram for my next exam, so can you guys take care of your idiot brother for me? It's not really like we have a choice, dude. Don't worry about it, everyone has issues. Not to be just has a few more than other people. Oh, that's putting it nicely. <laughs> See you guys later, I'm heading back to the dorms. Tsuki isn't sure of the details, but it seems Shiaki doesn't get along well with his family. He stayed at the Mesa dormitories since entering high school, even though his house is pretty close by. Hmm. Mostly curious, mostly curious. Chiaki quickly shuffles out of the sh in that classroom after he puts his things away. Well, what are we gonna do now? Um. No. Shuki's glare is so harsh in my. Harsh. Hit the hearth. Then Masaharu immediately looks guilty and bites his lip. Alright, I guess I can't go home without him. Masaharu leans over and begins shaking Natsume by the shoulder. Hey, wake up. Time to go home. Eh. Don't tell me like an eh. As expected, the gentle awakening has little effect. He shifts a little, but it remains fast asleep. It's then that Shuki notices a water bottle. Oh, dude, for reals. Freaking so. Oh. 
Really? He did? He squirted it right into his face. That's good. At least it'll wake him up, right? Yep. Yep, that worked. That worked pretty good. That worked pretty good. Natsume sputters indignantly and rubs his face with the sleeve of his blazer. Obviously disoriented, he then squits at Masaharu and Shuki, looking confused. Morning. Glad you're awake. Let's go. Okay. Trio complete. The Amamiya brothers head home for the day. Aww. But it looks like it's about time to um save and get the heck out of Dodge. So like and subscribe if you want to see more content because the content will be delivered straight to your doorstep. Your virtual doorstep. I'm pretty sure I've explained the whole virtual doorstep in one of my early, early videos, but you might have not have seen that. So that's okay. I'll explain it again. Virtual doorsteps, your email, it'll be delivered there. If you subscribe, obviously, that's where you get all your other subscriptions. That's how it kind of works out. That's just how the thing goes. That's how the cookie crumbles. That's how the lava boils. That's how whatever other kind of freaking weird, like nonsensical thing you can think of is. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.